Welcome everyone to Juvenile Justice Advocate International's 2020 virtual celebration, A Future for Every Child. We hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy during this time, and we thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening for this great cause. I'm Michael Miller, your MC for this evening, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Although our original plan changed, we're happy to be coming virtually to the comfort of your own home. Tonight, we are here to support the children living in detention centers in Mexico and Latin America. The COVID-19 crisis has affected everyone and these children were not the exception. We need your help to provide them with the assistance they so badly need and be able to give them a second chance and access to a brighter future. We would like to send a special hello to our ambassadors who supported us during the transition to this virtual mode and to our staff in Mexico and the U.S. who made this event possible. We still have an amazing program for tonight where you'll be able to learn about how much we have achieved during the last year, hear from our collaborators and people impacted by our activities, and get excited about what the future has in store for us and the children we assist. I want to remind you that our silent auction online is still live and will close at 8 p.m. tonight, so make sure to check it out and bid on any of our fantastic items and experiences. All profits from the auction and any donation you make, big or small, will go directly into aiding the children in detention centers. The link is appearing right now on the screen, but you can also find it on the information area of the Facebook event group. I would like to say hello to everyone watching and commenting on social media using the hashtag JJAI virtual celebration and the hashtag juvenile justice, where they are sharing their thoughts on JJAI and our content tonight. Again, Thank you so much for joining us this evening and for your generosity, which will impact the lives of so many children and their families. And now we present to you a video of the achievements and news from the last year of activities at JJI. In 2019 and 2020, we fought for a future for children in prison. We have been working since 2015 in Chihuahua State and have seen hundreds of youths released from detention and hundreds more never setting foot in prison. From 2019 to 2020, we were excited to see a record low number of youth in detention as only 47 children spent time in pre-trial detention. We completed our probation transformation pilot project with the Chihuahua State Prosecutor's Office. This project helps youths who are on probation to receive the services that they need, such as courses and scholar education, in the communities instead of in prison. Before we started the project, 20% of youth on probation were in violation of this probation. Now it is just 14%. And of those youths, thanks to the new program, a probation supervisor was able to get them back on track meaning that zero children had their probation revoked. Knowing that access to education is a cornerstone of successful reintegration to their communities, we continue to work with the Chihuahua Education Department and Child Welfare Department to enhance the educational and vocational opportunities for the few children who remain in detention. Most excitingly, from 2019 to 2020, we were able to expand our successful Chihuahua projects to three more states in Mexico, Guerrero, Durango and Mexico City. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with courts, detention centers and probation officers in these states, which will allow us to establish interagency working groups that will implement our alternative to detention programs. Nearly a thousand youths will be positively impacted as we work with these governments to reduce youth detention. In March of 2020, the novel coronavirus pandemic forced all of Mexico to enter into a lockdown. For children in detention, this represented a double lockdown as their family visits were cancelled and support staff was limited. Youth encountered a higher risk of significant mental health trauma and abuse as they became even more isolated. Thousands of children are now in a de facto solitary confinement with no access to school or recreational activities. Many detention centers didn't have access to basic cleaning supplies, face masks, or even drinking water. JJAI then made the decision to redirect all of its efforts 
to COVID-19 relief for the children living in detention. Thanks to generous supporters and partners, we have so far been able to send much needed supplies to 34 detention centers in 27 states, impacting the lives of 1,100 youths, which represents 65% of all the youth detained in Mexico. This assistance included over a thousand face masks, over a thousand cleaning supplies, 200 care packages for youth being released from detention, 65 board games, 57 sports balls, five laptops for virtual classes, five cell phones for video calls with families, 150 books and magazines. We have also mobilized and recruited volunteers to teach virtual classes for youth in detention. 15 volunteers have taught 10 different classes with 29 detention centers logging in weekly. Not only did our small team mobilize this massive relief effort, but we were the first local organization to develop recommendations on March 19th to protect children in detention centers during the pandemic. We immediately began working with the Mexican federal government to share these recommendations with state governments. And we began a series of 13 webinars, which had the participation of several government officials in Mexico. Through these spaces of conversation, we established better relationships with state detention centers and court systems, ensuring that children are protected from any physical and mental health impacts that the novel coronavirus may bring. Beyond Mexico, we learned that many other countries in Latin America were overlooking the impacts of the pandemic on youth in detention. So along with international partners, we organized nine webinars to address the effects of the pandemic on the juvenile justice systems of Puerto Rico, Bolivia, and in Central America. Over 3,000 viewers attended these webinars, mostly government officials. Sola, sin tu cariño. JJAI also addressed the mental health of the children living in detention centers by organizing an art contest for youth in detention. This contest provided them with a safe space to express their feelings and thoughts through art. 287 youths participated and they shared how excited and happy they were to have this outlet to express themselves. We are currently collecting data from across Latin America about how governments are changing their juvenile justice practices in response to the pandemic. This way, we can work towards having less factors of risk for children and learn how to react better in future similar situations. These ongoing efforts will ensure that children in detention centers are not forgotten, that their lives are protected and that they have a second chance. Thank you for being a part of Juvenile Justice Advocates International. Your partnership means that we have been able to positively impact the lives of thousands of children across dozens of countries during this very challenging time. Today, more than ever, we must ensure a future for every child. Thank you. We would like to give a special thank you to Partners for America, Operation Blessing, the Mexican Rotary Club, McInnes and Doom. As you can see, we've been very busy this last year and it's all because of you. Our supporters are what keeps the engine going by providing financial support, but also by letting our team know that we're not alone in this battle. We thank you for your support, and so do the children living in detention centers and their families. We had the chance to learn this firsthand when we sat down and spoke with the mothers of two children in detention in Mexico. Here's what they had to say. y de ahí sacaba para los recursos que ahora sí que lo poco que yo podía llevarle. Tuve problemas en el aspecto de que me caí en depresiones y no sabía al momento cómo sobrellevar las cosas. Por parte de ustedes, yo ahora sí que me sentí que yo no estaba sola, que yo pues me sentí un poco protegida. Les contaba mis cosas, lo que a mí me pasaba, porque antes yo no tenía quién decirle y había veces me ahogaba yo sola en todos los, mis problemas que yo traía. A ustedes, muchas gracias porque pues hacen el esfuerzo tan grande para ayudar a las personas que muchas de las veces sin conocernos nos apoyan tanto. 
Ajá. Se los agradezco de corazón. Una experiencia muy fea, una pesadilla que yo ya no puedo despertar. No fue muy duro cuando me detuvieron a mi hijo. Como que quise entrar en depresión porque me ponía a llorar por la nada. Y yo le echaba mucho de menos a mi hijo. Y ya no soy la misma yo de cuando él estaba acá afuera. He cambiado mucho. Yo era alegre, ya me amargué. Para mí ha sido complicado por la pandemia, pues no nos podemos ver. Pero sí me habla él, hemos tenido llamadas, ya me quedo más a gusto. Pero sí, sí es muy duro no poderlo ver, no hay como verlo que oír. Cuando entró la pandemia me dice, madre, cuídate mucho. Y dice, mejor mira, guárdate en tu casa para podernos ver, dice. Porque si así, quién sé cuánto vamos a durar para vernos. Y él dice, ya quiero que se acabe la pandemia, ma, para vernos, para abrazarte, para besarte. Pues en el pasaje y luego nos lleva, quién sabe que me, pues sí, ¿verdad? la salida es temprano cuando yo salgo, este, nos lleva a almorzar o nos lleva a comer. Me siento apoyada y le di y le agradezco a la licenciada, como se lo dije, yo se lo he agradecido mucho desde que la conocí, le he agradecido mucho lo que me ha ayudado y le voy a estar agradecida. Y yo le recomiendo a los padres pues que cuidemos más a nuestros hijos, dónde andan, platiquemos con ellos para saber en qué andan, con quién andan. Muchas gracias por sus donaciones y que así sigan para que también los muchachos no sufran tampoco de escaseces ahí de lo que a ellos les hace falta. Te los agradezco con todo mi corazón y que Dios les ayude. Hola, te saluda Jacqueline Ángel Juan, jueza especializada en justicia para adolescentes en el estado de Chiapas. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es María del Carmen Baeza Ramírez, soy la directora de la Unidad Administrativa para Adolescentes del estado de Campeche. Te comparto mi experiencia de colaboración con Justicia Juvenil Internacional. Nos brindaron el apoyo para 18 personas adolescentes que se encuentran privados de su libertad, recibieron un donativo consistente en artículos de higiene personal, artículos de limpieza y en artículos deportivos, los cuales son muy valiosos, sobre todo en estos momentos. Quiero agradecer a nombre de todo el personal operativo, administrativo, técnico y los jóvenes que tienen una medida privativa de libertad por el apoyo recibido. Mismo que ha sido material deportivo, juegos de mesa, cubrebocas, lo cual nos ha facilitado la relación con ellos en el sentido de poder establecer relaciones más humanas. El estar en contacto con Justicia Juvenil Internacional a través de las videoconferencias, de la comunicación, de la información y de todo lo que nos han compartido, ha enriquecido el conocimiento del personal y de los jóvenes para los que nosotros trabajamos. Por este motivo, amigas y amigos, los invito para que contribuyan a través de sus donaciones para fortalecer esta gran iniciativa de trabajo en favor de la justicia para adolescentes. Gracias. Estamos muy contentos y sobre todo Deseamos continuar con esta relación de colaboración que tiene lo que toda la humanidad necesita, el enfoque humanitario. Muchas gracias. Muy gracias a la Fundación de Justicia Juvenil Internacional por el curso de dibujo que me ayudó a aprender nuevas técnicas y poder participar en el concurso de dibujo internacional. Hello again, everyone. We're here at JJI's 2020 virtual celebration, A Future for Every Child. The children living in detention centers had their lives turned upside down once again when the COVID-19 pandemic began. They were already living in isolation from society and from their families, and when they were starting to get used to a life behind bars, their normalcy was taken away from them. Due to health measures imposed by the federal government in Mexico, all access from family members and from the volunteers who provided them with school and extracurricular activities were suspended. 
These children are going through adolescence and a pandemic behind bars without the support of their families, without access to any activity that will help them cope with a double lockdown. Their mental and physical health were in danger. So JJAI decided to step in and provide assistance by sending personal hygiene and cleaning supplies to the detention centers which required it most, as well as board games, books, and sports gear. However, our most successful assistance was to provide supplementary classes through video calls to every detention center that required them. We found volunteers who teach English, drawing, macrame, knitting, and yoga, which made the children engage in new activities and have a way to cope with the new situation they are living. Here's a message from two of our volunteers. Hola, soy Victoria Muñoz, soy arquitecta y fundadora de la marca El Nido, en la que diseñamos y elaboramos productos para la decoración del hogar a base de carpintería, herrería y macramé, que es tejido con la mano. Hola, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Ignacio Cázares. Llevo ya dos meses compartiendo la clase de yoga con los chicos de Justicia Juvenil. Actualmente eh, estoy dando servicio de voluntariado a casi siempre ocho centros de la república eh, a través de Zoom. Comencé este año dando clases presenciales a las chicas del CESAI aquí en Chihuahua, pero llegó COVID y tuvimos que reajustarnos y este, comenzamos a dar los talleres eh, vía Zoom. Yo creo que ahorita se conectan entre tres y ocho centros cada semana por durante una hora y media. Aproximadamente han estado entrando entre unos 40 y 80 personas de diferentes partes de la República que se están conectando a través de Zoom. Y esto se me hace un, un, un compromiso tanto para mí como para ellos. JJI siempre ha sido súper abierto, súper amables conmigo las chicas desde el principio, buscando lo mejor para, para, los, para los centros. Mi opinión general sobre justicia juvenil internacional es que es una asociación que se preocupa por darles un, una educación más integral y compartirles algo más para que, que llenen sus vidas, que sea pues, satisfactorio para todos. Me siento súper agradecida y súper orgullosa de esta oportunidad y pues de esta experiencia y pues de, aunque sea de lejos y súper poco, poder eh, meterles ideas a los chicos de lo que puedan hacer cuando salgan o de mientras mantenerse motivados por el tiempo que estén ahí. El impacto que esto ha tenido para mí en, a lo largo de, de, del servicio es algo que ha sido muy satisfactorio personalmente. Eh, también ha llenado mi, mi corazón en el servicio. Solo agradecerles y comentarles que vale muchísimo la pena estos talleres y estos proyectos que se han estado haciendo en conjunto y pues a servicio de varios centros de toda la república. Muchas gracias. Si tú tienes la oportunidad y en tu corazón está el donar, no lo dudes más. Another way JJAI responded to the COVID pandemic was to create an art contest where every child living in detention centers was able to participate. Check this out. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but the kids did. The children were given an opportunity to express their feelings in a safe space and have fun whilst competing in a healthy way against their peers. And the turnout was great. 287 children signed up and presented original drawings, songs, choreographies, and essays, which allowed us to get a glimpse into their lives behind bars and make them know that there are people out there who care about what they have to say. And we present to you the winner of the written category in this next video. Enjoy. Les hablaré de cómo me siento desde que me enteré del COVID-19. Pues me siento triste, preocupada, desesperada por mi familia. Que todo. Quisiera que todo volviera a la normalidad para volver a ver a mi familia. Los miro por videollamada, pero no es la misma a verlos abrazar. A veces me pongo triste porque desde que empezó el COVID-19 casi no tenemos actividad porque no miraba a mi mamá. Y en estos momentos es cuando necesito un abrazo de ella. 
Y por otra parte, es una experiencia para mí, aparte de la que estoy viviendo. ¿Y por qué es una experiencia para mí? Porque igual si estuviera afuera, con ellos no podría hacer lo que hoy deseo, por protección. A lo que voy es que no todo en la vida, es teléfono, es calle, es un amigo, droga. Y ahora pienso diferente, ahora solo quiero y ocupo el amor de mi familia. Perdí a mi hermano, no me pude despedir de él, no le pude llorar junto a él, no le pude decir que siempre va a estar en mi corazón. El COVID me ha quitado muchas cosas, como también me ha hecho reflexionar de algunas cosas. Pero nunca hay que perder la esperanza, ojalá todo vuelva a ser como antes y remediar el tiempo perdido. A veces me desespero por todas las medidas que tenemos que llevar, pero es por el bien de nosotras. Todos los días rezo por mi familia, por mí, por mis compañeras, por todo lo que hagan afuera. Ojalá pronto acabe esta pesadilla. Welcome back to our virtual celebration, A Future for Every Child. We're very excited to have shared with you what JJI has been up to this last year. You've heard from the mothers of the children we aid. You've heard from the authorities which have partnered with us. And coming up, you'll hear from our executive director, Douglas Kaler. We have been able to assist many people over the last year. And even though we have been a key component to reduce the amount of children incarcerated, we fear the need for more assistance has not decreased the same way. We understand the pandemic has hit everyone hard, both emotionally and financially. But these children and their families are in a very precarious situation. Most of them come from very poor areas of the country and they can't afford food and basic need supplies, let alone a bus ticket fare to visit a son who's in a detention center miles away from them. Our small team has spent many days working extra hours to provide them assistance because it is our passion and our belief that no child belongs behind bars and we will not stop until there is no actual need for our organization to exist. But in the meantime, the need is real and the need is urgent. We ask you to please consider making a thoughtful donation to our organization now and to bid on our silent auction on the link appearing on your screen if you prefer to make a donation and at the same time win a fantastic item or experience. Some of the items you can find are one-of-a-kind Mexican crafts, beautiful fashion items for men and women. Well, I could use some of those. Special edition mezcal and champagne bottles. I'm thirsty already. A two-hour cruise on Lake Minnetonka on a private pontoon for four people with wine and cheese provided. Yes, please. A one-week stay for two at a beautiful condo in Acumal on the Riviera Maya in Mexico, valued at $1,500. Oh, I'm just around the corner. Come by and say hi. Also, I'd like to remind you that our goal is to raise $10,000 tonight and maximize the match challenge. Any donation will be matched, so please go to the link for our donation page found on the main information area of the social media where you're watching. Help us transform the youth justice system. We'll be right back. Hola, mi nombre es Alejandro Ramón Fuentes. Soy magistrado presidente del Tribunal para Menores Infractores del Poder Judicial del Estado de Soy la licenciada Dalia Vianey Mendoza Martínez encargada del despacho de la Dirección de Reintegración Social y Familiar del Adolescente en el estado de Tamaulipas. El día de hoy quiero platicarles de la Asociación Civil Justicia Juvenil Internacional México. Esta asociación de la mano de las instancias de gobierno y de los poderes judiciales y locales auxilia y colabora con nosotros en la reintegración social de los adolescentes en conflicto con la ley haciendo un énfasis en aquellos adolescentes que se encuentran privados de su libertad. Queremos darle las gracias a la Fundación Justicia Juvenil Internacional por el apoyo brindado al donarnos una bomba de agua, la cual es utilizada en el Centro de Reintegración Social y Familiar del Adolescente de Wems. Ya que realiza donaciones, suministros de limpieza, suministros personales, artículos deportivos o alguna situación en la cual requieren los adolescentes. En el caso de los centros de internamiento, ahora en la situación 
sanitaria que hemos vivido, facilitó teléfonos para eh, habilitar la comunicación que tienen los adolescentes con sus familias. Nos han brindado cursos a través del de Zoom, a través de, de videoconferencias este, consistentes en clases de dibujo. Se va a participar en los cursos en Zoom eh, consistentes en inglés, dibujo, yoga, macramé y tejido. Eh, es un honor que nos hayan volteado a ver como institución carente de algunos cursos, sobre todo en esta, en esta etapa, en esta época eh, de la pandemia, con el fin de cuidar su salud. Muchas gracias. Quiero pedirles el apoyo para este tipo de sesiones para que sigan contribuyendo. Gracias y esperamos que las sigas apoyando. Muchísimas gracias. Doy las gracias a la Fundación Justicia Juvenil Internacional por la donación de la bomba de agua, ya que ello nos beneficia mucho en nuestras necesidades personales. Hello, I am Gerardo Guerrero, Consul of Mexico in San Paul, Minnesota. I have been honored to partner with Juvenile Justice Advocates International and their important work for children in Mexico. I am very happy to see a Minnesota-based organization dedicated to improving the respect for human rights in my country. Vice President Walter Mondale has been a supporter and a friend of Juvenile Justice Advocates since its first annual celebration in 2015. When the future of the organization was in doubt, Vice President helped to make that first annual celebration a huge success and ensure that the work could begin in Chihuahua, Mexico. Mr. Mondale continues to support Juvenile Justice Advocates' mission to protect children in the prison system. Without the Vice President's support, just Juvenile Justice Advocates would not exist today. It is my pleasure to present the 2020 Outstanding Advocate for Children in Prison Award to Vice President Walter F. Mondale. Hello, my name is William Mondale. It is my great honor to present the 2020 Outstanding Advocate for Children in Prison Award to my father, Walter F. Mondale. The Vice President and I both believe that the work of Juvenile Justice Advocates International is incredibly important, especially now when the global pandemic has revealed huge social inequalities where youth from marginalized communities are more at risk than ever and the failures of excessive imprisonment are more evident than ever. JJAI is part of the movement for justice and the protection of children around the world. The Vice President, my dad and I are glad and honored to stand together in the fight for children around the world. Dad, thank you very much. Thank and you. here you go. Thanks. Thank you. Let me go up with my esteemed trophy list and you can come by and see it once in a while. Thank you. As we reach the final moments of our event, I would like to take the time to remind you about the mission of JJAI which is to advocate for policy reforms in the juvenile justice system and to improve respect for human rights of the most vulnerable, our children. This year our mission was put to the test and we came out with a higher conviction to make every action count to work towards achieving our mission's goals. We want to continue to aid all the children that need assistance and we hope you come together with us on this journey towards achieving a brighter future, a future of opportunities for every child, a future that makes our society better more understanding and happier. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you to Vice President Mondale for again honoring us with your support and confidence. Our theme tonight is a future for every child. I think there's been many times in 2020 where the future has felt very uncertain. All of us have probably lost sleep worrying about our health, uh, worrying about the health of our parents or grandparents. Uh, worrying about our children's school or our jobs. We felt isolated and we felt powerless at times. The future has seemed very uncertain for even us. For children in detention, it has been even more 
concern. Fernando is a 17-year-old boy. He's been in detention in Chiapas, Mexico for a little less than a year. In March, the detention center announced that they were going on lockdown. This meant that Fernando could no longer receive visits from his mother and his brothers, and that many of the volunteers that he had connected with and even the, the mass services were being canceled. This meant that Fernando was feeling very sad and isolated over these past six months. But when you ask him, he is most concerned about his family. He's sad that his older brother can't attend his university graduation. He's concerned that his younger brother, who's trying to finish junior high via distance learning, and he's scared that his family will get COVID-19. And these are the things that are keeping Fernando up at night. His future is very uncertain. And Fernando is like a lot of the kids that we hear from during the pandemic. They're isolated. Family visits have been suspended. Um, in the detention centers that have school classes, they're being canceled. And really only the security staff are there interacting with the kids. Many are becoming depressed. The staff are scared that they're working in institutions at risk to the spread of the disease. Many of them feel abandoned by their supervisors and have no resources to clean their facilities or isolate children who get sick. In some places, youth are being moved to adult prisons in order to turn the juvenile center into an infirmary for adult prisoners with COVID-19. The youth that we work with have never been more vulnerable. Their physical health is at risk from the disease. Their mental health is at risk from the isolation. And the lack of oversight in the facilities mean that they're at risk of human rights abuses. Their futures are very uncertain. Into that uncertainty, Juvenile Justice Advocates International stood up to respond. As soon as the lockdown was announced in March, we published recommendations for protecting youth in detention. And in fact, the Mexican federal government published those recommendations and sent them to all of the country's juvenile detention centers. We've held dozens of public and private consultation webinars with government officials across Mexico to work to get youth released from detention and to ensure that detention centers are protecting them. And we began reaching out to officials in Bolivia, Central America, and Puerto Rico to share recommendations and experiences. We're connecting with hundreds of officials across Mexico and Latin America. And so now you've seen how we've mobilized resources and partnerships to provide cleaning supplies, face masks, books, board games, sports balls, virtual classes and laptops that touch over 65% of all youth in detention in Mexico. When we called one detention center official who hadn't received any assistance from his government, he actually began crying on the phone when we offered him our support. It's thanks to you, our supporters, that Juvenile Justice Advocates International was in this unique position to engage with the government to improve their response to the pandemic, but also to provide relief supplies for children who are completely forgotten. When no other actor was there to respond, you made it possible for us to respond. The pandemic has pulled back the curtain that the most vulnerable most at risk and at need youth in our societies are receiving the least help and the least protection. We're asking for the least prepared and least resource institutions to protect them and to set them on a right path and back into society. These are institutions where they're more likely to be beaten than to attend school, where their families are extorted when they try to bring basic supplies to them. The entire system is designed to take their futures away. And that is more true now than ever before. But we believe that every child deserves a future. Every child should be able to hug their parents and their brothers and sisters. Every child should be able to attend school. Every child should have hope for a job and to be able to contribute to society. This is what we're fighting for together. The pandemic is not over. Through your support, we were able to ramp up our response to the initial stages of the pandemic. Because of the pandemic, we were faced with a $100,000 budget shortfall. 
that you helped us reduce to just a $20,000 funding gap. And tonight we have a chance to fill that gap. This will allow us to continue our life-saving work with youth in detention. It costs about $42 per child. $42 for a child like Fernando to get access to virtual classes, get access to video calls with his family, and beyond the immediate needs. Our pandemic response has opened doors to see true system transformation. Because of our work to respond to the pandemic, more jurisdictions are asking to become alternative to detention sites. In fact, Fernando's state, Chiapas, Mexico, is going to be our fifth site in Mexico starting in early 2021, where we'll work to ensure that youth like Fernando are protected from the physical and mental health impacts of the pandemic, that youth like Fernando have a real opportunity to safely remain in their communities rather than in detention, and that youth like Fernando and his family have the tools they need to support him and give him a future. Fernando is set to be released in two months. He told us he wants to finish high school and get a degree in electrical engineering. Fernando deserves that future. I'll finish tonight with Fernando's own words. He said, my biggest wish is that all of these things that we're going through with the COVID-19 pandemic would be over with. That is why every night I pray that little by little we return to normal that my family stays healthy, and that those of us in the detention center are no longer affected emotionally. This is our prayer as well, Fernando. As you can see, the pandemic has made our work to fight for children's future more important than ever. We're transforming the juvenile justice system across Mexico and Latin America. Now with your support, we can continue this life-saving work. What an incredible opportunity you have. For $42 each child, you can improve Mexico's juvenile justice system and directly impact a child's life, giving him or her hope, freedom, and a future. These days, what can you get for $42? What about giving someone freedom and a second chance for $42? That's the opportunity we have right now. Of course, why would you want to make freedom possible for just one child if you can do that for 50 or 100 children? Support, to support this great work, we need to raise $10,000 tonight, which will be generously matched, raising up to $20,000 and impacting the life of 467 children currently in prison. I'd love for you to support Juvenile Justice Advocates International and for you to make a significant investment to our work of $4,200, making freedom a reality for 100 kids. Can you imagine giving 100 kids their lives back? Wow. Please go to the Juvenile Justice Advocates website that you see on the screen today and give a child a future. You can also click the link in the comments of the live stream in Facebook or YouTube to make that same donation. I'm counting on you to make a donation right now. And on behalf of Juvenile Justice Advocates International, we are grateful for your generous support. We can't make a future for every child a reality without you. But with you, think about what we can do. Thank you so much. I wanna thank you for joining us tonight and help make a difference in the lives of these children. We hope you enjoyed our event. Thank you again for your company and of course your continued generosity. Please remember that our silent auction is still open until 8 p.m. tonight and our donation link is open all year round. If you want to learn more about JJI, the website is jjadvocates.org and you can follow the latest activities of the organization through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. From all of us at JJI, stay safe, keep your distance, wash your hands, and above all, Let's be kind to each other. Thanks, and have a wonderful evening. Good night, everybody. No hay peor cárcel que la que nos imponemos en la mente. 
El miedo se apodera de las personas con tanta fuerza que incluso consigue apartarlas de sí mismas. Tristeza, desamor y ansiedad son la condena que comparte cada día más gente. Pero compadecerse y esperar no conseguirá el indulto. Hay que levantarse y luchar. Todo va a cambiar. Que tus sueños sean más grandes que tus miedos. Que la vida sea un juego que siempre quedes primero. Que tu tiempo no se escape entre tus dedos. Y que todas esas dudas que te aterran se conviertan en sí puedo. Que tu orgullo se transforme en un te quiero. Y que todas tus mentiras pidan un cambio sincero. Que tus besos sean más grandes que tus dedos. Que ningún error te impida en tu vida ver la salida y volver a empezar de cero. Que tu alma no sea de nadie. Que tu mente sienta paz. Y que si caigo me levanto y lo pretendo una vez más. Que tu corazón sea libre y no dependa de otro ser. Y que el futuro fluya puro sin tortura. No te preocupes por el tiempo, tendrás cada respuesta a tus preguntas, pero en el justo momento buscaste la felicidad en todas partes y tal vez un día olvidaste que siempre estuvo aquí dentro. Voy a salir, quiero luchar, llevar mi vida a otro lugar, no me importa nada más, ahora voy buscando mi verdad. Voy a salir, pienso llegar, mi vida acaba de empezar, me dejo esta oportunidad, ahora sé que todo va a cambiar. Voy a salir, quiero luchar, llevar mi vida a otro lugar, no me importa nada más, ahora voy buscando mi verdad. Voy a salir, pienso llegar, mi vida acaba de empezar. Me cuesta oportunidad, ahora sé que todo va a cambiar.